I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for today's broadcast? I've got a lot to share with you, but before we do, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith with me in agreement right now. I'm agreeing with you. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Believe for a miracle today. Praise God. Now, yesterday, I told you I was going to continue what I was sharing with you. And we're sharing from John chapter 15 and verse 7. Jesus clearly stated there. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. I, I told you yesterday, take note. He said, you shall ask. Acts. It's not something of um, he, he, there's a difference by, you know, by saying you shall ask and you can ask. We have always taught the scripture to mean you can ask. But that's not what he's saying. He's actually saying you shall ask. And yesterday I was describing I was giving you a, 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 a picture of what Jesus said. Now that's exactly the picture the Lord gave me. Now, you are kept in this room. And he says, abide here. Don't step out of this place. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Ah, light as supra ita The Lord just showed me something beautiful. I wish you will understand the mind of God. Brothers and sisters, we can make Anywhere you find yourself, you can make it beautiful. Ah, le kabo sapra. May the Lord give you understanding today. So I said, you, you, you're here because the Lord said, be here. It can be in an organization. It can be in a, in a locality. You know, the, maybe the Lord told you, oh, I want you to go over to that village. And there's a work I want you to do for me. And he said, oh, God, what's the matter? Mm. Brother, you know, we are missionaries. Yes. Mm. God said I should go to a village and start a walk there. And so what's the matter? There is no light in that village. Is God saying you should go there? Yes, I know God said I should go there. God is sending us to a life of suffering. You know, the Bible says we shall suffer. It doesn't necessarily mean so. So, you go to that place. His word came to you. And you've allowed his word. Now, his word came to you, so you want to obey, right? So, you, you pack your things and you go there. Now, you have accepted his word. Now, you get in there and all the challenges start coming at you. <laughs> Hmm, I feel like packing my bag and running away. Then that's when he watches if his word will abide in you. <laughs> God. So you're like, hmm, tomorrow I'm going. I'm going tomorrow. Can you imagine? No light. I can't charge my phone. No, they, look at the water. They, ah, no, 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 no. Ah, I've passed this level. Okay. That night, tomorrow I'm going to go. But the Lord sent me here. I can't go anywhere. No, I can't. No. <laughs> I can't go. I can't go. Aha. His word is now abiding in you. Right? Okay. So, what do I do now? You shall ask. You shall ask. You shall ask. Yeah. Lord, I need electricity in this place. Now, now, you think, you think, when you ask, Lord, I need electricity in this place, you, you may just be selfish because when you say I need electricity in your mind, you're thinking of a generator. 
And now you think of it, okay, if I get generator, where do they sell for? They, they are so backward, they just use lantern and, and you know, that's what they use in that place. So where do, where do they sell gas or petrol in this place? Ah, you have to enter a vehicle and go one hour. What? But you shall ask, Lord, I need electricity in this place. Do you know, do you know, by that your prayer, God will move on the government. God will move and suddenly you just say, oh, they have awarded contract to construct tele, tele, um, pole, electricity poles and wires to wire that whole community before your very eyes things will begin to happen. Now you may not understand. Oh, there's no clean water in this place. See the water we drink. Oh dear. I feel like running a car road anyway. You shall ask. And then you ask the Lord, we need clean water here. And it comes. Lord, wow, people here know nothing. We need school. We need a school in this place. And then it comes. You shall ask and it shall be done. He is not just saying ask for bread and butter. He is not just saying ask for your bread. He, you see, as long I could be sure. The, the Lord, listen, you, you are married, right? Okay, so... Mm. So, this man, you had this plan. I want to marry, Lord. <laughs> I, want to, I want to marry a man who's, who's, who you have blessed so much. I want to marry a man who will be taking me on, who will be going on family vacation every year. Yeah, Lord, that's what I want. You know, tall, dark, handsome man. You know. Okay. And now, sister is praying. Father, this year is my year. I, I receive my husband this year. And one bro, you know, you know, when I say bro, you can understand what I'm talking about. Not brother, not brother, not brother. One bro. <laughs> Come and say, Sister Roots, uh, I, I, I was praying last night and uh, I'm convinced in my heart the Lord wants you to be my wife. Huh? Bro, where do you work? You know, we're still believing God. Right now, we're just managing as a clerk. In How much is your pay? You know, it doesn't matter. You know, we're going to trust God. But no, how much is your pay? Well, my pay is just minimum wage right now. Ah! <laughs> Bro, I've heard you. I'll pray about it. <laughs> and then you get home. You say, Lord, don't do this to me. How can, how, who gave him, what gave him the temerity? What gave him, how can, can you imagine? If I'm looking for husband, is it this time? And then you, you think all those thoughts and in the night, the word of the Lord comes to you. You know, just like God did to Peter. What I have blessed. <laughs> Don't call him clean. <laughs> Three times he'll show you that vision. Lord, you wake up in the morning, you will know exactly what the Lord is saying. Lord, why? Why? This is not my dream. And then the Lord begins to deal with you and deal with you and deal with you. Ah, okay. Hmm. So let me talk to my brothers and sisters. See what's going on. I don't understand. Sister, but you know, it's better to marry a righteous man than to marry a man who has... I, I know, but it's good to have righteous and those things also. All those thoughts will come to your mind. And now you know this is what the Lord wants you to do. And so you say, okay, Lord. <laughs> Lord, give me one more sign. And he gives you the sign. Ah, Lord. Okay. Okay. Ah, sister, I'm still waiting for your answer. <laughs> Bro. Maybe you should go and see pastor. Because you've gone to pastor, you've cried to pastor. Pastor, if, are you convinced? Pastor, I, I think he's the Lord. 
Okay. You get into that marriage and you're beginning to think, wow, why am I here? Because God told you to come here. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask. Okay, Lord. Our life's got to be better. Our life's got to be better. He's not saying to start harassing the brother. Brother, our life's got to be better. Go and look for a better job. This is where you start. Brother, we need a car. Brother, I know, I know. No, 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 no. I'm not saying look at your pay. We need a car. Don't we need a car? I know we need one. Yeah. So let's ask God for one. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. God told you to marry me, right? Yeah. And he told me to marry you, right? So we're here abiding in his word, right? He said, we shall ask. Do we need a car? Yes, we need a car. So let's ask. Do we need a better house? Yes, we need a better house. So let's ask. Oh, do we need, don't think about it. Do we need, now, now, why is that need coming? Because you are abiding in his word. His word is controlling your life right now. But you see, hey, come now. Jesus himself said, your father knows that you have need of these things. Your father knows that you want to be going on vacation every year. There is nothing wrong with that. It is a desire. Are you hearing me? Then you get to that point where you can summon the courage and say, Lord, who want to be going on vacation as a family? Thou, I had that dream before I got married. You, you look at your husband's pay, probably you look at your own pay, it doesn't, it can't even take you on a bus to the next state. <laughs> ah, what do we do? You shall ask. You shall ask. You shall ask. Look, we desire to go on our first vacation abroad. Um, but, uh, 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 no, but we desire it. So we ask. Can I tell you something? If you read Jonah, this way I was going to with all this salvation. Shalabaya Katlaba. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am the vine. Verse 5 now. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So Jesus said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will bring forth much fruit. Now notice the word is fruit, not fruits. Much fruits. Why not much fruits? Much fruits fruits. I'll tell you why today. The fruit we bear, which is what we call the fruit of the Spirit, is love. Love is the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, what is the fruit? There are nine fruits of the Spirit. No, there are no nine fruits of the Spirit. There is one fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is one. And what is it? It's love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Praise <laughs> God. What about the other ones? He was describing what love is. Now, watch this here. 
So he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So, I'm the branch, right? And where we read before, verse 7, he said, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Okay. How is it being done for you? Your father gives it to you. Because remember, this thing I was doing yesterday, you are not allowed to go out of him. So because you are not allowed to go out of him, you only have one way, and that's by asking him. And so when you ask him, he gives it to you. Do you know every time he gives it to you, he is demonstrating his love for you. The same way he demonstrated his love for Jesus. To Jesus. He demonstrated this love. You remember Jesus one day was in one spot, having preached for three days, looked at the crowd and said, we need to feed these people without going anywhere. He was right there, didn't send anybody anywhere, nothing. He produced right in that place um, loaves and fishes to feed over 5,000 people. What do you think Jesus did? He abide, he, 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 he abode in the fire. He, he just stayed there and he asked. And it was done for him right in that wilderness. He received enough bread that fed that whole crowd and they had leftovers. What was God doing? Demonstrating his love to Jesus. So when you ask and he gives it to you, what's happening? He's demonstrating his love for you. So that's how the car came. That's how the house came. That's how the clothes came. That's how this promotion came. That's how all these things came. They all came because you asked of your father. Brothers and sisters, do you know that each of those things is a fruit that you're bearing? How did you get that car? God gave it to me. No, what do you mean God gave it to you? No, truly, I, I, I prayed about it. My wife and I prayed over it or prayed concerning it. And one day we got a call and this and this and that. Oh, really? Wow. Um, how, how did you get that money used for? Oh, this, this is what happened. We prayed about it. Man, God loves you. Why is the person saying God loves you? Because your fruit, your fruit is much. The fruit, now when he says the fruit is love, and he says you will bear much fruit, he doesn't say you just go about loving everybody, love. No, 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 no. The fruit, I call here, your life as a witness, because now you are witnessing Jesus. And because the life that was in Jesus is the same life that is in you, and you are that branch, do you know the truth? Every branch is a witness of the vine. When the branch is not doing well, look at a tree. When the branches are not doing well, the problem is the vine. If the branches are doing well, they are showcasing the glory of the vine. So the branches are the witness that the vine is good. So we look at the fruits the branches bring forth and we tell that this vine is of great quality. Where are your fruits? Where is your fruit? Where is the proof of God's love in your life? Where is it? Are people speaking about you and saying, man, God answers his prayers. God answers her prayers. Now, when they say that, what do you think they are saying? God loves you. God loves you. No, I'm not just talking about, oh, um, you escaped an accident. They say, ah, God loves you. That's just one. This can be your life in every way. How did you get that job? God gave it to me. How did you get? God gave it. Do you know what you're doing? You're bearing much fruit. And Jesus said, so shall you be my disciple. The same way Jesus lived his life. He wanted money. He got it from a fish. What do you think that was? The demonstration of God's love for him. Everything he wanted, his father gave it to him. 
And hey, it's the same way he expects you to live. Praise God. And my time is up. Praise God. I pray you will understand this truth and begin to walk in the reality of it today. Receive the grace of God that opens your understanding now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.